What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Ninth Dawn 3, apparently. The Shadow of Earthiel. If you never heard of this game, neither did I. It got, uh, got recommended to me on Steam. And so apparently it's an action RPG where we're going to roll around collecting monsters to fight for us and eventually accumulating our own massive horde of randomly bribed critters that will die on our behalf. So that sounds somewhat compelling to me. It sounds all right. When I mean, if you don't play pet classes in like Diablo or like Grim Dawn, then it might not sound that awesome to you, but I do. I love pet classes. So anyways, it seems like an entire game that's based around being a pet class. Let's go for it. Uh, we gotta pick what our character looks like here. Okay, do we have anything that's just like a, I want like a, a shaved ass bald head. That's all that I want, right? Yeah, that looks about right, right there. We want like the low man voice, like Rawr! you know what I mean. I want my, I want my voice like, Rawr! like we gotta. I always go for the voices that are nice and super deep. And we'll, oh, I gotta make his name. All right, well, I will name him Splooty then. All right, let's dive on in and see if this is one of those games that you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. Enter. All right, so we appear to be stuck inside some kind of dungeon. Oh, I like how the character is actually 2D and it does like kind of a Paper Mario turn. It's kind of cool. Apparently, I can punch. I got a potato. I didn't used to have a potato. Now I got a potato. Look upon my spuds and despair, ye viewer, for you have none. Apparently, I found four gold and another potato. Now I have two potatoes. Despair even further. And what does this do? We can open a chest. Ooh, nice. Yeah, I'm gonna take all the things, and then what does this one do? That one's got like a sword inside of it, and also a sharp stick. Is a sharp? It's a pole arm, dude. I can have spears. Well, I'm gonna have spears then. I have to. All right. So with the C key, we can bounce on into our inventory right here. I will probably. Oh my God! There's so many things. Apparently a spear goes in your offhand? Okay, I mean that's a two-handed sword. Does it go in my offhand too? It does. It doth, as they would say in the medieval times. And then apparently we just like thrash around. That's how we defeat our enemies. Just like, <laughs> we just thrash all over the place and hope for impact. All right, let me go over this. Hey, there's another one in here. I want this one. What does this have? It's got a magical glowing stick. Some gold that looks suspiciously like candles, some bandanas, and some gloves. I'll take it. That sounds pretty decent to me. What does this say right here? Open your inventory and navigate to a well. Oh, that's fine. I already figured that part out. I already got a little bit ahead of the curve. Like, I tend to skip over tutorials, and then it gets me into trouble later. What does those do right there? Maybe I have to turn into mist or something in order to get through there. Maybe we got to use, like, vampire powers or something. I don't know. There's a scary rat over here. Like, how scary is he? He didn't seem that scary. I was able to stab him with a small piece of rebar that I found on the ground, and it seemed to kill him just fine, so... A scary rat, if you're using the mouse, you can stab him. Very nice. Uh, the fiend was defeated pretty much instantaneously, so I don't think there was going to be any need for any ducking or, or dodging there. What does this one say? You've been rewarded and leveled up. Apparently, we can allocate points and stuff, too. So we've got our abilities over here, but we don't have any ability coins, which is kind of a bummer. We do have skills, though, and in fact, it does seem like there are a great many of them. There's a lot of skills over here, from crafting skills to actual practical skills. We've already leveled up polearm one time. Hells to the yes. Uh, we've got five points to spend. So it increases your physical attack damage and contributes a small amount of your maximum health. This will give us damage with daggers, bows, and crossbows. and makes you move faster. Endurance increases our health and maximum stamina. Our intelligence is going to increase our magical attack damage and restore spell potency. And then our wisdom is going to increase our mana. I'm going to go with a little bit of strength. And like a little bit of endurance first. I'm gonna make kind of like a paladin character, I think. A paladin with a big badass spear. Is that one open? It's got barbed arrows, cabbages, potatoes. Apparently all of this stuff is super restorative. So we'll keep that in mind for later. In our equipment menu, we can put on a bandana, which actually put a bandana on our head. It looks like we can also wear gloves right there. I couldn't tell if anything changed once we had equipped the gloves, but what does this do? Oh, dude, I can shoot lasers? Man, I always wanted to shoot lasers. The lasers don't appear to do that much damage, though. 
They, they don't seem like they break crates very fast. I would like to change the size of that text over there. It's a little bit too large. And wouldn't you know it, there's an option in the options that allows you to set up exactly how big you want the UI to be. In increments of 5%. So, like, it's very, very customizable. I shrunk it down by about 25%, and I feel a lot better about the screen real estate now. I'm kind of a stickler about my screen real estate, all right? I just can't help myself. And our equipment menu, I'm going to put my, my Spearino back on, right? What is this thing? It's a blood spawn? Dude, it looks like a booty hole in the earth. I don't want to touch that thing, no. Like, I, I feel like the earth is going to get some kind of gratification out of it, and I'm not going to... Ah! Hey, 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 hey! He dealt... Well, I thought he dealt so much damage, but it doesn't actually look like... What does that lever do right there? It opens up that door. All right, let's go. We're going to open that up. Rat right there. Take his ass out. He's all done. Get him all fixed up with a whooping, too. Apparently, I picked up a rat's tooth. So that's pretty sweet. I don't know if my character is, like, auto-healing. When I get hit, it looks like I get healed, like, instantly. So I don't know if he's, like, auto-eating food. You have found an ability coin. They are scattered throughout the world. Well, I haven't found it yet. Is that the ability coin? Nice. So now we can go to the abilities menu. And we can pick something sexy. We have life force that will permanently increase our maximum health. It looks like we can't get after any of this stuff just yet because we don't have enough coins saved up. So that's kind of a bummer. But, you know, later on maybe we will. Later on, maybe we will. It'll come back around the horn, though. We've got Warrior. Permanently increase your physical attack power. Permanently increase your physical defense. Let's go with the attack power for right now. I'm an all-in DPS kind of guy. I firmly believe that if the enemy manages to kill you, it is not because you were bad at dodging. It is not because you were bad at blocking. It's because you were bad at planning out your stats and making sure that your attack was so overwhelming that you could just drop your forehead, go, ah! and flail wildly and watch the enemy just fall over from the sheer majesty of your DPS. That's how I like to live my life in RPGs. It's who I am, and I'm not going to be ashamed of it. A few of those right there. A little bit of gold to throw around. All right, a little bit of that right there. Game's not much of a looker, but it does have kind of like a classic appeal to it of like the old Ultima games and whatnot. That's kind of what it reminds me of. Splody, there you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. Have you been messing around in the sewers again? Yeah, I was training. Well, it's good to hear you were being productive, but come on, Genreal is looking for you. Follow me. All right, I will follow you over to Genreal. Genreal, I brought Splooty for you. There you are, where have you been hiding away? I've been training. Fleen said you wanted to speak with me? Yeah. Uh, what was it about now? Oh, yeah. I received word from a neighboring village of Furloon. The village elder at Furloon has asked me to provide her with a soldier for a mission. A soldier? Of course, a soldier. There's been some rumors about ghosts or some peculiar like that, and they're raising a party to investigate the ghost talk. Comes at a very strange time. Monsters seem to be running wild these days. As such, all of our soldiers have been put on permanent guard duty to protect us. May come as a shock, but you're all I can spare at the moment. I need to send you, Splooty. All right, sure. Why not? Commitment. That's why I chose you. I knew that you would take it in stride to help us. Woohoo! Yay, Splatty! Uh, make your way to Furloon and seek out Esteline. Tell her I sent you. To get to Furloon, head north out of our village, then follow the northwest path until you get there. Alright, sounds good. Alright, great. Have some coin to buy yourself some supplies and make sure you get some food before you leave. Take your time to explore. Perhaps you'll find things that will help you on your journey. I'm sure Esteline will understand if you're late. Alright, cool, man. Uh, well, let's look around. Like, is everything breakable out here? Because legit, like, I'm gonna wander through this village and I'm just gonna, like, break everything. Like, it's all getting broken. So there you go. I've broken the hell out of everything. I mean, there's an armor shop down here. We might be at Play Feud. What is Feud? We don't have enough cards. Oh, the game's got a card game. I can sell you some cards for 200 gold. Now I'm good, man. I'm solid. I don't wanna... So here's what's gonna happen. Any game that's got a card game... Oh, that's like his house? Oh, I thought he would want to, like, sell me stuff. I guess not. I guess not. Medium John. What's up, Medium John? Hey there, what you want in my tavern? I can't serve my food or drink yet, kid. Medium John's got medium problems. Ooh, he's got quest. I need someone who can cook and to help me restock the tavern. Can you cook? I can. Nice, kid. Well, let's get to making some stuff. You do all the making. I just need to stand here and help me patrons. You want to help stock up my tavern? Okay. Ten smelly broth. 
Cook them up all nice and come back when you're done. Okay. Apparently that's locked, so I can't get on in there. I have no idea how to make smelly broth, so... That's kind of bad. That's kind of bad marketing too. Like I wouldn't name anything smelly broth if I could. I'd probably name it like super awesome drink substance that you should definitely put inside your mouth for exactly the five hundred dollar price that I questioned you about. That's what I would name it. It's a bit of a mouthful, but I'm sure we can come up with an acronym. What's well, down in here? A rat. Kill it. Stab it in the face. Apparently, we can still mess about the dungeon a little bit further if we really, really want to. And I, I do. I do want to. Oh my god, there's rats everywhere. Kill them all. Stab them dead. Yeah, I do seem to regenerate or something. I don't know where we've acquired that regeneration from, but we do seem to be able to regenerate. I don't know if we can actually go anywhere down here. Yeah, it looks like we. Uh, it looks like that's like a small piece of the puzzle, maybe. Like maybe there's other access. Maybe there's other access points throughout the town. Another chest down here. Hold on, can I get to that? Oh no, dude! It's the typical RPG problem. Our character can't swim. I don't know what it is about mythical heroes never being able to swim. It does look like there's secret nooks and crannies around that you can get into if you can, like, access the dungeon. Like, look, that stairway has no door. You just come up through there and there's a treasure chest. Let's go with the main quest first. I wanna, I wanna get into some trouble here. I wanna get to, like, the monster taming portion of the game because I'm all about monster taming. There's Foddy, there's a few other things. I don't think we have to worry about all that. Hey, you there. Before you head out, let's play a game of feud. I've played everybody in the village except you. Let's go. You have any cards? That's too bad, but I want to play so much that I'm going to give you some. Now let's play. Apparently we're playing feud. Alright, so we get nine cards from storage and we use it for the game. When it's our turn, we select a card and put it a place to put it on. If you place the card next to or on top of an opponent's card, they enter battle. There is a stat corresponding in the direction that is used. If the newly placed card is a greater than or equal to... Alright, let's do it. I believe. How many cards do I have? Not that many. Not that many. Uh, yeah, we will use that card. Use that card. Yeah, just bring all the cards in the world. Apparently, we're going to be doing some kind of, like, battling or something. Alright. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing here, but I guess we'll figure it out. Alright, so Splooty goes first. Yeah, sure. I'll put him right there. Oh, he attacks three to the right. Gotcha. So he attacks three to the right, he attacks one to the left, and I bet he has one HP is how that works. I don't know why he would have played that right there. It seems like a weird thing to play on that spot, but you know what? Put that right there because that gives me three attack in like all directions. And I'm about it, I believe. Uh, he's got two attack on that side. I'm gonna need two attack on that side in order to make it happen. Oh, and if you've got like the better attack, it looks like it converts it maybe. Oh, and you can play on top too. So playing on top is the central number. Okay, that's what I was curious about. So the central number is kind of important. You kind of want to, yeah, exactly. You kind of got to make that happen. I feel like this guy's got much better cards than I do. I feel like it's problematic. Uh, I'm going to put you in right there just to take his card. He's got to play that four at some point, and I know he's going to. I'm sort of interested in how these factor in, like, because I've definitely got higher attack, but it didn't seem to do anything. So, like, I am curious about how that works. Huh, interesting. It did work right there. So maybe if it's equal, nothing happens? So the four is officially down. That's just going to be his from now on. There's not really a whole lot I can do about that. It's nothing that I want to play. Can I just, like, skip my turn? I don't know. Huh, interesting. Apparently three is the maximum that can go in any space, too. Alright, good to know. Good to know. So I, I think it's got to be greater than. It can't be equal to. Otherwise, you don't take the card. I've got, like, a zero, and everything's pretty much locked down. So I'm pretty sure we've lost here. Not just, like, lost, but really lost. But then again, it's a weird-ass game. 
Oh, he gets to steal one of my cards. Oh, so it's like high stakes. We're like racing for pinks out here. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, the cards were free, so I don't really care that I lost one. Uh, I can't go inside of there, but it looks like there's lots of awesome treasure inside of there. Welcome to the bank. How can I help you? I don't know. Oh, okay. He just like stores my stuff. All right. I want to head out this way, and then I'm going to touch that other blood butt hole right there. And then we're going to run. Oh, there's a ratty over here. I'm going to kill him. Hold on. He's got to die. He has no place in this realm. The ratty must be destroyed. Yep, destroyed he is. A little bit of loot right there, which I'm all about. What's up with this uh, little down depression over here? What did that do for me? Maybe open something up, give me access to something that might be kind of cool. I'm going to continue destroying crates. Come on, poke that thing, take it out. Can I go down inside the well, or is that not an option? Oh, it opened the door over here. Nice, there's one of those spider things. Judging from the cards, I assume the spiders are somewhat tougher than the other stuff I've been fighting along the way. But there's a rad treasure chest in here, and I want it. I was going to say, those eggies seem like they're going to spawn on me. Like, I've got a bad feeling. I've seen Alien. Like, I know what happens here. What do we find? We've got a wooden axe, and we've got some arrows. And my inventory is just those two pages. Okay, so I want to be careful about our inventory space. This is definitely a game where they've kind of like arbitrarily limited the amount of inventory space you're allowed to have in order to sort of like inspire you to effectively be careful about what it is you pick up or don't pick up. Yep, there's a lot of critters over here. Oh, he's apparently got an HP left. I thought because the meter was completely and totally empty that that would sort of denote that, like, hey, he's going to die at any moment, but not how it works, I guess. Eh, we're still doing okay. I mean, we seem to be doing all right. Is this the place that I was supposed to go? This kind of seems like maybe the place that I was supposed to go. Fifth swin. Okay. Well, at least we got him and not fourth swin. Oh, the gate is locked and you may not enter for loon. I have business here. Genril sent me to see Esteline. Oh, you're the soldier they sent over. If that's true, maybe you can help me out. You see, the truth is I've locked myself out, and I'm too ashamed to shout for help. I'm supposed to be protecting the gate, you know? The amount of ridicule I'd get if they found out I locked myself out. All right, well, how can we open the gate? Well, I can't really leave this station, but you can. The switch for the gate is on the other side right there. You see it? There's a secret entrance to the switch room, and you can get there by entering the loopy ruins below and navigating through the caves to the other side. I'd go myself, but I can't leave. Honestly, I would do it. I'm not scared. I'll go through the loopy ruins and open the gate from the other side. Thanks, man. Dude, worst guards ever. No wonder they're having to outsource, like, their people that are coming through to hell. Oh, my God, there's bats. Yeah, I'd be scared, too. That's a lot of creatures that just tried to murder me. Let me go ahead, and I'm going to upgrade some of my abilities here. Take that up a little bit. I'm going to take that up a little bit. We're going to be like an HP god out here. Just an absolute HP heifer. And we've got ourselves a wooden sword right there. We've got some shoes that are plated with wood. Just in case. We're using that old Dutch. we got them old Dutch clogs on right now. So we can do like a little happy tappity dance whenever we come across victorious. Alright, so stab these dudes over here. Nothing going on inside that room except for a whole bunch of really foreboding coffins that I'd rather not play around with. Uh, if you could just dive for me, that'd be great. Thank you. Just take a dive there, sir. Take a dive. I don't see a switch or anything that I can fiddle around with, but, oh yeah, I need to put my shoes on too. I'm like adventuring shoeless right now. It's not a good look. Nobody trusts a hero that ain't got no shoes on. It's just the way life works. There you go. So we've got shoes on now. Hells to the yeah. Is that like on right now? Oh, like I never put, I don't even have pants on, dude. I haven't put on pants or anything either. Apparently I like loaded my clothing into my backpack and was like, no, 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 we're hanging brain today. Before we went on our adventure, I guess like we celebrated the adventure by initiating it pantsless. I could break all these crates, but frankly, I don't feel like it. I don't have an AOE ability or anything yet that makes me feel better about the whole thing. So like, eh. Spider, here, get stabbed in the face. And there's our ruins. On a scale of, like, one to holy shit, how deadly do you think these ruins are going to be? Probably, like, somewhat deadly, right? I got to stop breaking crates, man. It cannot be that important to break crates for $5. It just, it can't be. I'm going to, I'm going to stick to, that spider can open doors, dude. The game done changed. Spiders the size of dogs and they have thumbs capable of grasping door handles. There are things to be worried about in the world right now. The easy seasoning. 
I really feel like they missed out on an opportunity just to call it like easening. Like, I don't know. It would have shortened the word on down, and that could have been like definitely a marketing ploy. You know, just to get the name out there, let people know what's up. Nice. Yes, continue eating a great many. Apparently, it's HP regen. And I wasn't aware of it. I can dodge. However, you know, it's a little, it's, you gotta wait for the attack animation to resolve itself. Otherwise, the dodge ain't going off. I do like the enemy density. I, I do think that for any kind of, like, action RPG, you really do want to have, like, a lot of enemies on screen at any given time. It makes games entertaining. Like, I haven't been able to get into certain action RPGs, even though I am a fan of the genre, simply because there's not enough enemies, dude. Like, I want to hold down my right click and nuke, like, a thousand enemies from orbit every single time I go into combat. I'm not trying to fight, like, one or two enemies at a time. I also don't agree with cooldowns. I don't like any action RPG that puts my abilities on cooldowns. I want to be able to freely spam all of my abilities as much as... Ow, oh, dude! I don't know what's happening right now, but it hurts. Apparently, I've got a disease status right now. It's probably not the best. Oh, no. Yeah, bro, just run for it. Yeah. I'm dead. I, I, I got arbitrarily diseased, so I didn't know it was going to kill me. It kind of is what it is. Sometimes you have bad luck. So now that we're rezzed, I did want to play around with the monster taming thing. It looks like we can do monster taming over here. It looks like creature bait is like a lot of money. It's expensive. So like be aware. Oh, that's equipped. All right, we'll sell it then. Yeah, sell all this stuff. Like anything around here that I'm not actively using can go. Although I do like the idea of like a dagger. So the traps are like super expensive in order to trap these critters out here. I'm sort of curious if I'm supposed to be able to do this right now. It, it seems like we don't have the money in order to do a lot of the stuff that I want to do. But we're going to try. I want to tame a rat, dude. I don't know what's going to happen. Like, if the ratty's going to die or if the ratty's going to, like, stay alive. But we're going to try it, man. I'm going to put a trap in right there. And then where's my monster bait at? There it is. All right. Let's go see if we can get some monster baiting done. Uh, we'll put... That's, that's a big rat, though. I don't think we can catch that one. That rat seems... That's, that rat seems a little bit better than all the other... What, what is that right there, and why is it trying to hurt me? Go out, go away, dude. Go away. All right, so where is this critter at? We've got a big rat right there. I'm going to try and get one of the little ones first because, like, we don't have that much bait. Where the little one? There's a little one right there. Hold on. i got to kill that guy. All right, so we put the monster bait down. Right. Right. Nice. So the monster is, like, slightly happier. The rat broke my trap and could not be pacified. Well, that was $1,000 well spent. All right, rat. Fair enough. You have to die. We don't have the money for it. It looks like the taming process is going to take a lot of money. But from the videos that I've seen, I've seen characters running around with, like, super epic armor on with, like, 500 monsters behind them having, like, these epic Narnia battles uh, with, like, huge other hordes of monsters. And I saw how many bad guys were down here, so I thought for a second, like, maybe... Just maybe I might need the backup, but... Didn't seem to work out that way. We're going to have to track down a little bit more treasure if we really want to make, like, a good mileage out here. I suppose I do actually have to break all these for my, my three golds at a time. Eventually, it'll add up to 950, all right? Not right now, but someday. Catching a bat would be pretty cool, too. I would like having a couple of, like, Zubats to run around and, like, take care of business for me. I was always a weird fan of Zubat. Like, none of my friends when I was playing Pokemon Red growing up liked Zubat, but I thought Zubat was pretty dope. Eh, cloth shorts, a wriggling spider leg relic. It gives us 3% movement speed. That's kind of cool. I actually didn't expect to find something that good down in there. Yeah, let's equip that bad boy. I don't know if you'll actually fully be able to feel like 3% move speed, but still, it's something, okay? We got, like, a, a red spider leg, and we've equipped it somewhere. Hopefully not inside of ourselves, because that would be crass, and unfortunately it would raise the age rating of this video, which is not something that I'm interested in for right now. Oh, yeah, I went back around this way. It's okay. We're getting extra XP right now to make up for all the XP we lost when we died. There you go. There you go. Take them out. All right, so we've got this right here. Let's go down and take a look. 
I mean, a lot of this is going to kind of depend on if the door stayed open. Like, if I have to pull that switch again, things are going to get a little gnarly. I'm also not super sure how we get rid of that disease status. We probably have some kind of item or something that gets rid of it, but who knows. A few more enemies down. Let me see my inventory real fast. Like, so we've got HP regen. Doesn't look like any of this gets rid of disease. That cures bleeding. And restores a decent amount of our HP. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we have the curative item required in order to get rid of a disease just yet. But maybe someday. Maybe someday. I do like kind of the volume of loot and stuff that you get as well. I've always felt that like the secret to a good action RPG is having like an ass ton of loot just like explode everywhere every time you kill anything. And like you can make it all low quality and low grade and like gold and like gems. It doesn't all have to be stuff that people care about, you know? It doesn't have to all be legendaries. Although I think a lot of action RPGs have learned that lesson. If you go through and look at Diablo 3 and Borderlands, and you start looking at like a lot of the, the looter shooters or action RPGs around, I've noticed a lot of them are dropping a lot more loot nowadays than they used to when I was a kid. Even like legendaries and whatnot included, because they've realized that like you're not just trying to get the legendary, you're also trying to get the perfect roll on the legendary. And so like having it drop from time to time when it's already like a 1 in 500 that you're ever going to get a perfect roll is, you know, it's part of the fun, I guess. You can disenchant it and use it for something else, maybe. I like the little map they have up there. Very, very cool. There's a lot of like little old school inspired things about this game that I like. And in fact, I don't actually necessarily think the graphics are altogether that bad either. Like they don't look great and the, 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 the animations aren't fantastic, but like the pixel art for the backgrounds and like the set design and like the objects and whatnot is competent enough that I, I think that like a lot of the things they did graphically were a conscious choice. Because, like, the backgrounds look really, really good. They look nice. Uh, the main character looks okay, too. I do like kind of the paper doll thing that they've done with a lot of the characters. I'm going to need to level up at some point. But it's just like every single room is full and full of so many monsters that all want to kill me. And rats that know how to open full-size bulwark doors that, uh, you know, I really haven't gotten the opportunity to do so yet. I'm going to kind of hack my way down the middle right here. Is there any food inside of here, dude? Exactly. Your boy needs some healing, man. Another bandage. Definitely take that. I feel like this is going away from the city. I don't think that this tunnel is taking us into the city anymore. But frankly, I don't really mind because I enjoy a good dungeon crawl. Always been a dungeon crawl guy. I don't really need like a fat narrative so long as the character customization is on point and like you've got dungeons that are compelling and nice to look at. That's why things like the Bard's Tale always worked for me is because like the storyline's cool and everything. I don't really care about it that much. But like Grimrock, for example, not like a ton of storyline. I mean, there's storyline in it from like the things you pick up. But I never felt like that was the point of Grimrock. Like, the point of Grimrock, and what made Grimrock so great is that the dungeon design was fantastic, and there were secrets, like, all over the place that you could unearth with meaningful loot inside of them, and that just always made me really, really happy. Sometimes narrative is not everything. Oh, hey, we got an ability coin down here. I figured there had to be... Oh, that must have been a boss or something. That dude was kind of beefy. Oh, I've been poisoned. Interesting. Well, the poison seems to have fallen off, so I think we'll be okay. I like that they just rewarded me for exploring further down into the dungeon and going off on like a weird tangent in a different direction by getting an ability coin. I like that. That's a really, really good sign when it comes to level design. Uh, like what a bad developer would do right there, what somebody that doesn't know what they're doing would do right there is like at the end there wouldn't be any real payoff. Or there would be just some monster at the end that drops like randomized loot. Like I like the fact that they gave you something that was important to your character's progression at the end of like the ancillary area. Like, it sounds obvious, but, like, a lot of games miss that, and, like, they drop the ball on it, and it's tremendously demoralizing and unsatisfying, and it really, it takes away one of the main hallmarks of RPGs, which is exploration. But anyways, I think that's pretty much all I got for you today. Uh, this is Ninth Dawn. I hope you guys have been enjoying the play. 
We put about 30 minutes in right now. We didn't get to do the monster taming because apparently monster taming is a rich man's game. But I would like to get into it because there's entire sections of the UI that are dedicated just to kind of like taking care of your monsters and like feeding them and like collecting them. And like it looks like there's fishing and crafting and card games. Like it seems like there's a lot of stuff going on beneath the hood of this game to the point that I'm honestly not super sure if we've really gotten the full grasp of what is on offer here with just like the 30 minutes that we've spent with it. That being said, however, I am intrigued. I am very much intrigued, especially for this game being kind of like one of those little sleeper games that Steam didn't go out of its way to promote to anybody other than me. And that's because like every game that I've looked at over the course of the last month is like some tiny little niche indie game. And so of course it recommended it to me. But yeah, actually kind of surprised by this one. I'm sort of, I'm sort of enjoying it. And I mean that in the best possible way. Like, I'm having a good time with it right now, and I wanted to get further on in and earn some money so that we can tame some monsters and have, like, a companion that runs around behind us and we can name him Humorous Things. So anyways, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's with world in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like on it. I have associated links all down below that you can check on out. I have a Twitch stream where I stream live pretty much every day of the week. I'd love to have you and be your host. Aside from that, I also have a Discord, which is where I rally the troops and you can talk to me directly. Hi, do it, take care everybody. I'll see you tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Goodbye.